talk right now while I do this drive to work. But I was thinking about something that has been on my mind for a little bit. It's a concept of being a dad. And how deep, <clears throat> how deep, I mean it's so deep my voice croaked. <laughs> but how deep of the concept of being a dad is. In terms of the responsibilities, the expectations, the realities, because uh, I'll say uh, with five kids, it is not easy being a dad. And it, I think it makes it harder, but it also makes it easier too having a wife. <laughs> On top of that, a godly wife. Because if I had to do this all by myself, I think I'd be in, I'd be probably the worst dad ever. I mean, I guess probably not the worst, but I'd be, I'd feel that way about myself. But on the topic of uh, the, you know, the expectations, the realities, and uh, I forget what the other part was. Well, we'll talk about expectations. There are expectations put upon us as dads, but also expectations we put on ourselves as dads. And uh, I try not to compare my responsibilities in my job to my wife's responsibilities at her job because I value her job so much because without her uh, I'd have to put my kids in daycare and some weird out of shape incapable immoral unaligned woman would be watching my children and teaching them things just teaching them things that I would not agree with because I know on surface level and face value everybody can get along and everybody can seem compatible but it's generally the deep things of a person that you ought to be concerned about when you're taking your kids to child care or even if your wife is in child care you know she's vetted you know you you both believe very very similarly so you don't have to worry about her turning your son a certain a way or your girl a certain way or teaching them bad habits or the wrong things But thankfully, I don't have to deal with any of that because I have a good, godly wife at the house. But, you know, the job of a husband, or I guess the job of a dad is, is it's not even just being a dad, you know, you just, I talked uh, with this to another uh, Christian coworker that our responsibilities is like, you know, how they say, wearing different hats. You know, where one day we're, one moment we're playing dad, one moment we're playing husband, one moment we're playing uh, a man, we're, one moment we're playing uh, a Christian, you know, not that we're not always a Christian, but just that, you know, different things take different hats, different moments take different hats. And uh, being a dad is just one of those hats because you can't ever just say, I'm only this. Because the moment will arise when being a dad is not enough because then you have to be a good husband. And that makes it so much harder. And I think that kind of goes along the lines of expectations. Maybe not even just towards dad, but being a man. 
that's probably the better way to put it, is just expectations of being a man with with responsibilities. But you know, uh, you, being a dad, you you're expected to teach your sons to be hard and tough, but also gentle at the same time. And also, you're supposed to love them too. And it makes it hard because sometimes we don't know what the balance is. And it takes a lot of what you would say, uh, a lot of trial and error. And hopefully you, you find the balance before it's too, too late. Because if you don't find a balance, you will ruin your son. But on top of that, I know it doesn't help. I know for me, especially, specifically, it did not help not having a father that was very... Talkative. I mean, that's the best way to put it. It wasn't very talkative. You know, and very unaffectionate. And I can't tell you if I remember if my dad has ever even said, I love you. Or if he's even said, I'm proud of you. Or he's even tried to direct me in a manner of manliness. That makes it hard to know how to direct your own sons in the way of being a man and all and helping them understand the responsibilities that come along with being a man and if you ever become a dad the responsibilities of becoming a dad and the responsibilities of being a husband if you ever become a husband Whew. yeah it's not easy but I tell you it's doable if I can do it I know that you can do it And aside from that, being a loving and gentle dad to a little girl, finding that balance, that's, that's hard, if not, if not equally as hard, if not harder, I don't know. It may depend on you. But find the balance between harsh and gentle and loving and caring and... But you know, sometimes you have to be stern. That, that's the hardest thing ever. And that's only one hat. And that's not even the whole spectrum of being a dad. That's just the basics. And you gotta teach them how to be good people. Try to try not to teach them your habits, and the list just continues on. It just never ends. But another hat I would say is you gotta be a good husband. Yeah, um, that's not easy either. You gotta be the same thing. You gotta be gentle. You gotta be loving. Not stern and not harsh, like ever. I don't know. <laughs> it's probably not the same thing when you when I think about it. But you know, you have to find the balance of stern sometimes. Because let's just say your wife, she has impulses with buying things and it hurts the bank it hurts the overall goal of the mission you know you got to just sit down and say babe I think we need to talk about your spinning and I don't mean to be harsh if I come off harsh and I don't mean to be mean but babe your spinning is really hurting us and it's overall hurting the, the, 
the, the team. And that's just one aspect of it too, you know, it could be a, a lot of things that the wife could be struggling with. But you know, being loving, but also being like a problem solver, It just, uh, when I think about the whole spectrum of uh, being a, of a husband, it, it is so deep because your wife has needs, not just physical needs, but also emotional needs that need to be met. And oftentimes, and this is not the same scenario for everyone because every man is different and every woman is different, but oftentimes it's always the physical needs that are met because we, we as men are very physical, you know, that's what physically, that's what drew us to our wife, you know, she was physically beautiful. And maybe we didn't give much thought to her, to her personality. Maybe, maybe we loved her personality, but you know, we never really got to understand her. But you know, we were compatible enough. And I feel like that's oftentimes what messes couples up is the, you know, things were great physically, like maybe you had a great chemistry, but, uh, you know, deep down things are not what they seem. You know, maybe they're struggling with childhood trauma. Maybe they're struggling with uh, bad habits. And you kind of have to learn to work and adapt and commit to a form of change that is positive for both of you as a couple, as a married couple. But the, the deepness of the topic of being a husband man is, I don't want to say a rabbit hole because it's, it's kind of a, <laughs> a negative, has negative connotations. But I would just say the best way to describe that is it is uh what is what's going on here? Sorry. But it's a it's a deep topic that uh it takes years to understand and unpack. Not that I've understood it either, I just this is what I've gathered from my years of marriage. And I'm just going on 10 plus and I'm looking forward to 15. I'm looking forward to 20 and I'm hoping that things get better and I'm, I'm willing to commit to that, that change to make it better. Oh man, um, what else? So the many, many hats of a dad. So on top of being, uh, wearing the hat of being a dad and wearing the hat of being a husband, you also wear the hat of being a man. And I will also add a godly man, a Christian. This is uh, something probably uh, more personal because this is all you. You know, no one else is going to get a say. Not really, at least. No one's going to get a say in what you do and how you are as a man. Because this is who you... Yes, childhood plays a big part in it. And life experience plays a big part in it, too. But overall, you get to hone and you get to craft the man that you want to be. Regardless of your circumstance. Because I did not have good circumstances growing up. You know, I might have had a dad. Thankfully, I had a dad. But he was not everything that he... He was probably like 1% of everything that he needed to be. And he's probably only half of that, too. Because he was, in, he was abusive to my mom. But you, you get to hone the man that you want to be. You get to make them. You get to make yourself into who you want to be. You can be strong. You can be lean and skinny and jacked. Or 
rich or poor or or wealthy or or I mean, you could be anything you want to be and you're and I think I've come to that conclusion in my life that despite my hardships growing up I still get to choose my life has not been decided and I see that also with my wife she did not have a good upbringing but she I think she made out, made out like a bandit honestly I mean she probably honestly was you know if 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 psychology is, is correct and all you know how they say well you know abused people often find abused people to abuse them and they just the cycle never ends and I think she made out like a bandit not that I'm a perfect man because I'm not but because she's still a Christian despite all of her hardships growing up she's still a good person she's still an amazing person She's resilient. And I think she made out like a man because she probably should have fallen back in that cycle. She should have probably found an abusive man that seemed loving at first but then just tore her to pieces. But back to the point about uh, being a man. Yeah, you get to be. You can you can make yourself do whatever you want to be, man. You really can. And some of you may think no, because you're still stuck. But I'm gonna tell you, you can, because I'm on a mission. I'm not there yet, but I'm on that mission. But on top of that, if you're a Christian, you're a godly man. You can be whatever you want to be in this life, still. But you have that still small voice in your brain, in your heart, in your mind that tells you, you probably shouldn't do this, you probably shouldn't do that. You should do this, or you shouldn't do that. And you just feel moved to do certain things more often. Hard things actually, like talk to strangers that you know you would never normally do. Or give where you normally would not give. Or have mercy where you would not have mercy when you could have just laid in on somebody. And that's such a, such a hard thing. Because God wants everyone to turn to Him and live for Him. And it's so hard for a man because we have so many things drawing us one way and another. And we have to hone ourselves. We have to control ourselves so that we can live for the people that love us. And live for the one that gave us life. So the hats of a man are are many, and I, I know I haven't covered everything. Because I really wanted to cover the topic of dad bod, but I'm going to have to cut it off. I'll, maybe I'll talk about it later. But um, thank you for listening if you're listening, and I hope you have a good day.